Hi, I'm an Industry 9 Torch Hub, and when it comes to servicing me, I suck. That's why when I grow up, I want to be a Hydra. Hey folks, we are back with another video, and today we are going to be doing a service comparison between an i9 Torch Hub and an i9 Hydra Hub. The i9 is uh, my buddy's hub, and basically I was doing some other work on his bike, and I decided why not just freshen up the, uh, the, the poles inside the hub, right? And I figured, you know what? Let me do a comparison. This is my girlfriend's uh, back rear wheel, and this has the older Torch Hub. And they are, even though they look identical, they are extremely different when it comes to servicing them. They couldn't be more further apart, okay? This one's definitely a lot easier. Basically, i9 went the way of the Swiss and made it where it's a completely toolless uh, maintenance design, okay? Whereas this one, you need a tool, no questions asked. So uh, next up, let's go over the tools needed and uh, the stuff needed in order to get this one done. Okay, as for tools needed, we are gonna start off with the torch. The torch, we are absolutely gonna need some tools. One of them is going to be a rod, a metal rod to take out the caps. You could try and take them out with pliers. There's a huge chance you're gonna damage something, okay? Because they are in there real well with these rubber washers or rubber O-rings inside, right? Now, whether you buy their tool or not, I did a long time ago, um, you might not have to, right? You could probably just make your own. I'll give you the measurements. This is not an even shaft, okay? There's different, uh, diameters throughout this shaft. So to take off the cap on the rotor side, the shaft size is 11.8 millimeters, let's say, right? So then from there, the shaft goes to 12 point, let's say 38 millimeters, right? So the opposite side is 12 millimeters, basically, okay, give or take. So, oh, well, it depends on where you measure it. It's a little bit different. So, well, 11.8 again, right? And then this should be similar, I believe, 12.35. So let me go a little bit lower, 12.35, yep. So that's it, you gotta, if, if you're gonna make your own, try and get as close as possible to the diameter uh, that, um, that I just measured, all right? But you are going to need a tool and ultimately to tap it out, you're gonna need some kind of mallet, right? Now, chances are very high that you will tear one of the O-rings, if not both O-rings, inside the caps. So <laughs> I bought extra O-rings and I have them just for that purpose, just in case whenever I do service my girlfriend's hub, basically, um, I have this set. I don't have to sit there and order a set of O-rings from um, i9. And you might need uh, or some, uh, a little tool to help you put the O-ring. You could use your finger, but sometimes this little flat spatula comes in really handy when it comes to putting in any kind of O-rings, right? Um, you'll need alcohol, paper towels, and for the i9 torch, we need free hub oil, right? So I got the Dumonte, um, any other free hub oil that's oil, not grease, oil, big difference, right? You do not want to put grease like you would uh, uh, DTE, for instance. It needs to be an oil. So um, basically, you're going to need that. And that's pretty much all we need for the torch. Now let's get into what you need for the Hydra. Ta-da! All we need for a Hydra is a little bit of hub oil and a little bit of hub grease, okay? Hydras have a new leaf spring system as opposed to the mini spring system, and you could use your fingers to remove those leaf springs, or if you're careful enough, you could use a needle nose plier to take them out, okay? So then uh, some paper towels and alcohol to clean everything up, and that's all we need. So, Let's start taking apart some hubs. So as mentioned, we will be starting this on the i9 Torch hub. Now with a Torch, you have to take out the cassette and you have to take out the rotor. So that's a bit annoying. You really shouldn't have to do that for this type of job, right? But in this case, we got no choice. I already pulled them out so I could skip that step. I believe I already have videos out there that show how to take out and put on new rotors and cassettes, right? So next we're going to be needing our little tool over here, right? Now this is the rotor side. I have a center lock rotor, right? So if it doesn't look familiar as opposed to a six bolt. So we're going to take our little tool, okay? We're going to put them in just a little bit. And basically we're going to use our thumb to create friction levels. We're going to try and pop them out as evenly as possible out 
Okay. So then we inspect this guy. There's an O-ring in there. Make sure that O-ring's in good condition. It's not frayed or, uh, or torn or has any issues, right? This one looks clean. I'm going to put this on the side. Now we're going to pop open, pop the other cap off. Now to do that, we're going to take a rod. We're going to put it all the way down. Now, this is key. Make sure that, as you can see over here, he's at the other side touching the cap, right? You do not want him touching the bearings or anything in here, essentially. He needs to touch the cap, okay? And then we're going to cup the driver just like that, right? And can you see this in frame? Shit, the camera's moving. Damn. And then we're going to take our hammer and we're going to tap him just lightly until the cap comes off. There we go. Now this guy, I can tell you right now, the seal is shot. Let me pull this guy out. In fact, there's a piece of seal right there, but you can see clearly that the seal on this guy is shot. He's going to need to get replaced. That sucks, but like I said, with these guys, it's very common. Personally, I hate that. So next, we need to take out the driver. Now take out the driver. We're going to turn them counterclockwise because the pawls engage clockwise, right? So we're going to turn them counterclockwise as we're lifting up, okay? Now, be very careful when taking out the driver because there's a whole bunch of springs, six springs and six pawls, and we don't want them flying everywhere, right? So just let them lightly disengage just like that, and ta-da, we're good. So that, that's opening up the hub. So next, we're going to clean them. The hub is easy, or at least the hub part, the, the, the tooth part is easy. You're just going to take a rag and spin them around. This guy's already clean, really. And basically try and get all the old grease. Chances are he's going to be a lot darker than this one. This hub hasn't seen a lot of uh, use. Now make sure at the edge over here you clean the inside of this edge real well because there's a seal that happens when you close the driver onto the, onto the hub, okay? And we need that seal to be tight. So this guy's clean. I'm going to put him on the side. Now, let me start with the end cap. I know that this end cap, inspector end caps, there are seals on the edges. This one is good. I know this one was bad because we pulled out all these little parts and pieces, right? So what I'm going to do is take out the end cap that's in here. Boom. Take it out. Clean the inside. Now we want to make sure that we clean the inside of the seat and make sure there's no parts and pe no little parts of seal sitting in there. All right. Nothing sitting at the bottom. So then again, you might need a seal kit. Make sure you don't start this job without knowing that you're backed up with seal kit. All right. So take this guy, put him out. Now to put the new seal in, mix them up. Your best bet is Ooh, too much grease, too much grease. Take grease, put it, force it in the actual seat. Because this seal, believe it or not, is a bit of a pain in the butt. It constantly wants to spring out. All right, so fill the seat so the seat seal could sit in it, right? So now we're gonna take our seal. In fact, I might put a little bit of grease on the seal itself too. Okay, done. So now we're gonna take the seal, we're gonna do this by hand. We're gonna sit it in a seat. And make sure it tucks inside. 80% of it's gonna be easy, it's that last 20% that's gonna be a major pain in the butt. Okay, so basically, as you can see, it's bent downwards now, right? You probably see that clearly there. Now it's a question of getting that downward part up without popping the rest up. And basically you got to use your finger. You could try and use a tool, but there you go. Come on. Ooh, so close. So close. But it'll spring out. See what I mean? It just springs immediately. Use your finger and press flat on the wall and drag it up until it hits its spot. Oh, see what I mean? Nearly there. Now it's going to want to bounce back down. The whole idea is that you don't want to give the side, wherever it's kinked like that, you don't want to give the sides energy to spring out somewhere else, right? So you want to force it 
using friction into its seat for that last little bit, and that should have done it. Nope. Ooh, so close. This time I should do it. Ooh, come on. There we go. So now we are seated, right? In fact, let me take this guy, bring him all the way around. Yes. So we have a new seal in there. Done. One last thing. Next, let's remove the pawls. You got six pawls and six springs. Be very careful. These springs will just spring out. And uh, sometimes there could be a, a lot of fun trying to find them. I'll tell you that much. And I'm being facetious when I say a lot of fun. Not fun at all. So um, we need to remove these. So remove them one by one. Pull up, straight up as light as you can. And let the spring just extend. And then just pull the spring out. Right now, be careful with these springs, they're very sensitive. Right, you could use a pick. There we go, and we just do that for the rest of them. Right, two, three. Like I said, watch the spring doesn't bounce out, they're going to want to bounce, and they spring pretty good. They got some good energy considering how small they are. And also watch you don't damage them. They're very sensitive. You could damage them easily, right? So four, four, five, and last one, and six. Okay, so from here, we just want to clean our hub. Any old oil, get in between, clean them real well. Where you really want to clean is the edge part of the seal, because again, this is going to seal onto the hub part, right? And we want that seal to be nice, clean, no uh, debris stuck in the middle so water and 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 well dirt could come inside and wreak havoc in your hub all right then we want to clean the inside of here too quick quick just to make sure there's no debris on there since that's going to have to go back onto the axle okay yep that's clean all right Cool. Next, we will put the pawls and the springs back in the hub. We need to put the springs and the pawls back into their seats, right? Now, to start with, what we're going to do is take a drop of oil and put it inside the hole where the spring sits. All right? One, that's going to help the spring sit in there while you're trying to put it back in. I don't think I got a drop in there. Come on. There we go. Now I'll drop that in. So, now the way it's going to work, we're going to take the spring and we're going to put it in the hole, right? You could use a pick to do this. Just be very careful with it. Don't bend it. Okay. So now, we take a paw. The teeth stick up. Okay. Now I'm going to try and do this in the air like this. It's much easier on a table. But the whole point is to press down on the spring and then put the pawl in its socket and let go, right? So you got to do two at the same time, basically. Now, this can be a little bit challenging doing it by hand like this up in the air. But just to show you guys that this is possible. And the worst part is I can't see because half the camera is in my face. Okay, try that one more time. Don't lose the spring. Like I said, it's much easier if you do it on the table. But I want to try and get a close-up so you guys can see it. Okay, so press down the spring. Just like that. Oops. And my hands are slippery, which doesn't help. Great. I'm going to get back in there. There we go. Boom. Done. All right, test it, make sure it springs back. And now you're gonna do that for all the rest. Okay, so again, we take a drop, put it in there, get the spring in, take this guy, see down here, he's gonna be much quicker. Press this guy in and Next, drop. 
spring and press in and drop. Don't force it. Whatever you do, do not force. Okay, if you force it, there's a good chance that you're going to bend the spring. Good luck getting another spring without ordering one. Or at least a spring of this size. Do not want to damage these springs. Okay, take this guy. Am I in frame? I'm not in frame. Crying out loud. Okay. Put this guy in. Mm. Why does this guy give me a hard time? There we go. Next. Five. Okay. Put this guy put in frame. And again, uh, we keep stick up, press it in, and done. And we'll do the last one in the air again. Why not? Okay. Put the spring. Great. The last ones that always give the biggest headaches. All right. Get the spring. Press it down. And done. All right. So next, we're going to put a little bit of oil on each one of the paws. And more importantly, we want oil on the edge around here. Okay. Next, we're going to put this guy onto the wheel. So now we need to put oil onto the wheel. Now, the more oil you put, the quieter the wheel gets. And these are very loud, loud uh, hubs, right? But you can't put too much oil because torches, they will spin on you with too much oils, right? So um, basically, I try and fill them up like that, basically, okay? Where he's pretty much on a 45 degree angle, but he's not spilling over, okay? So... Uh, it fills up on a 45 degree angle without spilling over basically, right? So then we take our hub and if you notice, there's notches here, right? Those notches are, are, are what are going to allow the, the paws to fit in, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy, slowly put him on top. If he gets stuck, just fix the spacer on the inside. Then we're going to turn him again counterclockwise until he sinks in. Boom. Done. Next, we are going to put on the end caps. Now, to put on the end caps, we're going to take grease. We're going to put it on the inside. Okay. Grease gun would be better. I'm trying to distribute this a little bit more evenly. Put a little bit more grease on this side. Okay. Now. I have a brand new seal in this thing, and this end cap could be pretty stiff with a brand new seal, okay? So basically, I'm going to take it and try and pop him in. So he could be real stiff. Real stiff. And right, now he's being too stiff. Come on, get in there. He does not want to go in. Why doesn't he want to go in? These are the things you got to worry about. Like I said, he sticks out a lot, and there's very tight tolerance in here. So, um, wow, I don't know why this guy's being so difficult. Uh. I'm done messing with him. Let's put this guy on like that. And let's see if we could tap him in. There, done. thing. So, I don't see any seal sticking out, so we should be good. All right, now clean all the excess oil, any kind of oil you see. Spin them, and done. Now the other side, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as hard. Again, a little 
a bit of grease on the inside. Yep, that's how it should have gotten. So it could have just been that seal. Now we clean the grease on the outside. And our Hydra is, our Hydra, our torch is serviced. Again, uh, not fun. I mean, not fun. It's just too much for nothing. I mean, it's an old design and Thank God they changed it with the Hydra, which you are about to see. All right, just make sure to clean all the oil, uh, any kind of grease that's remaining, and you are good to go. All right, now for the Hydra. So, unlike the torch, the Hydra, we don't have to remove anything. All you need to do, just like DT Swiss, is lift up. Ooh, juicy. Lift up the cassette, and right away, you're exposed to your pawls and the inside. No removing rotors, no removing cassettes. I mean, they should have done this a long time ago, to be honest, but we have it now. That's a nice thing. All right, so I'm gonna put this on the side. So first things first, I, I need to clean up that uh, tarry mess we got going on in here. This is in real bad shape. Holy cow. It's amazing how oil just turns to tar when it gets used. Okay, so you want to clean this up as good as you can, right? Remove any kind of old oil or grease. Now, here's the thing with the Hydras. You have the option. If you like the hubs loud, you can use oil. If you like them quiet, then use grease. You could use the same Dumont grease uh, that we use for DD Swiss, basically, or any kind of Dumont grease, or, or any kind of hub grease, basically, as opposed to oil, right? Now, one thing you want to clean is the edges in here, because there is a seal that gets created, right? And dirt can build up in there. Okay, so make sure you get your fingernail, and I mean, like, in this area here, basically, okay? If you can see that well, you want to clean this area real well, because you want that to be perfectly sealed when you put the driver back on. Okay, so try and clean the teeth. Real well. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. Boy, man, what a mess. Go back and forth, back and forth. Look at that, huh? What I might do, considering how bad this is, grab some towel, tear it in half, next time I tear it in quarters, put a little bit of alcohol in it, because that's really, really bad in there where the teeth are. Okay, Let's see if I could loosen it up and then remove. Do not grab your rotor, whatever you do with greasy hands, okay? Oh, that's looking a lot better, okay. So this guy's clean, just make sure to blow out. If you see like right now, I got a whole bunch of uh, little particles of uh, towel in there, make sure to blow them out before. There we go, putting new grease on. I'm gonna set this guy to the side let the camera cool off, and then we clean and work on that guy. Here's the inside of the cassette, or at least the inside of the driver body. We got our pawls and we got our springs. They're leaf springs, they're not like the old springs. Way, way, way better design. The old springs were just, oh, man, I'm so happy they changed everything, you have no idea. But removing everything is pretty much the same as before. In fact, these are so dirty. I'm just gonna put them on one of this, right? On a towel. So essentially what we're doing is we're going underneath the pawl, and just lifting it up just like that, okay? Once it lifts up, just pull it out, just like the other ones, okay? Wow, look how greasy that is. So, let's lift all the paws out first. We got six paws. 
Okay. Oops. Okay. Oh. Ready. Yeah. Four. Great. Or say that's five. And the last one. Okay. And six. Now for the springs, right? So unlike the other springs, these are like leaf springs and we need to pull them straight up and out. Okay. The easiest way, grab a needle nose plier, be very careful. Just grab onto him, small as he is, try not to warp him or damage him, and just pull him out. Why am I? Well, it's like I can't grip him. Why is he not working? There we go. All right? So that's one. It's all the grease is what it is. Literally. Oh. Two. Three. So it seems like if I put pressure down and then pull up, he comes out immediately. All right. Is that all of them? Oh, I got one over here. And six. Ta-da. That's all of them. All right. So now I got to clean everything and this is one big gooey mess. So let me take care of all the thick stuff first. Okay. Boy, man, what a mess. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Okay, and ultimately, I mean, I'm going to clean him more, but then grab the paws, clean the paws as well. In fact, what I think I'm going to do, considering how dirty everything is, I think I'm going to grab a little container, a little Tupper container, fill it up with alcohol, and uh, let it sit there and degrease. All right, I will be back. Okay, so I cleaned everything up. Uh, what a pain. That stuff was uh, uh, muddy. I mean, it was almost like tar in some spots. So uh, clean everything you can as deep as you can, as best as you can. Make sure to clean the inside as well, right? And clean the inside of the springs too, right? What I did, I ended up uh, putting them in a Tupperware, wherever it is now, and filled it up with alcohol, spun them around, let them sit for a little bit, and then took them out, cleaned them, did it one more time, and boom, done. We are good. All right, so now we got to put everything back in. So to put everything back in, we need to start with the springs. So the springs face this way, the paws face this way, right? Now the spring, you have a short side and a long side, as you can see over there, right? So the short side goes towards the middle of the hub, the long side sticks on the outside. And basically, so what we do is we invert, well, point the spring in this position and then squeeze a little bit and put it into its hole. Done. Just like that. Okay. And then we take a paw, the teeth stick up. Okay. And basically we take a paw and what you can do is you're going to squeeze the spring in a little bit and then put the paw in. Done. Just like that. And you're going to do that for all six. So again, Make sure it's positioned in the right way. Squeeze it in. Much easier without gloves, really. Um, where are you? I don't know if you can see it. Hmm. And my glove keeps on going underneath it. Great. Should take off the gloves. Make life easier. Hmm. Done. It's one. And then paw, teeth up. Remember, teeth up. Basically, spring it back a little bit. Hook it basically, right? Come on, look at that. What a pain in the butt. Hook it and sink it into its spot. Mm -hmm. I want to try and see if I can make it where you can see it good. 
So basically, again, compress a little bit and then seed it. There you go, just like that. Okay, let's see if this will look better. So again, short side goes towards the inside, just like that. Then teeth go towards the outside, press it in and seat. All right, and repeat until done. Hmm. There we go. Teeth on the outside, compress and done. Two more. Great. Hmm. Teeth on the outside. Press and, and if you're wearing gloves, make sure that parts of gloves don't get trapped and get stuck in there underneath the spring or the pawl. Okay, and the last one. Teeth on the outside, compress, and done. All right, we got our six pawls in there. So next we just want to test them quick, quick, each and every one of the pawls. And everything seems to be working fine. So now we need to fill them up with grease. Okay. Now the whole goal is you're going to fill up the inside with grease. Grease gun would be easier, but I don't have Dumont sitting in a grease gun. Okay. So just fill them up on your finger and then just sort of scoop it sideways so it all sinks in. Don't use like, uh, use like uh, DT Swiss grease, Dumont grease basically, right? Uh, hub grease. So you don't wanna use just hub oil here. You wanna use hub grease, big difference, big, big difference. We are gonna use hub oil, but for the paws, they need on the Hydra, hub grease. Ooh, that's a big glob right there. And since this one had less, I'll put the difference in there. Okay, now let's just clean up the remainder. So let's fill this guy here. All right, so we got grease sitting on the inside of everything, all right? Now, oil. We also need free hub oil, just like you know, on the torch, except the oil we're gonna put on the rim over here. Put a bead all the way around the rim. All right. Just like that. I'm going to put this guy to the side. Next. Grab our hub. Now you have two options. One, you could put oil just like on the torch hub, okay? Or if you want it quieter, put grease. Personally, I find these things way too loud. And I know my buddy thinks they're pretty loud too. So I'm just gonna put some grease all around the teeth. Again, the more grease you put, the quieter it gets, but again, because these teeth are so fine, you, don't, you do not wanna to put too much grease because they will skip. All right. Put a little bit more right here. Cool. All right. Now, again, clean up anything on the side. Okay. Now we're going to take our hub, the frame. We're going to put them in. And just like on the torch, there's those slots. We're going to turn them counterclockwise, and he's going to sit in. Done. Look how quiet he is now. I mean, he's never going to be super quiet, but... A lot, a, lot, a lot less quiet than he is if we filled him up with oil, okay? And then, just to finish things off, take our end cap off, clean the inside. Unlike 
the older end caps, these are a whole different design, much easier to service. Okay. Clean the inside. Make sure you don't get greased. Do not touch your rotor. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Then we're gonna take some grease. We're gonna put them on the inside over here. But here we're using, we're not using the hub grease. Actually, I'd rather put them inside here. I just don't know of a nice way to put them on the edge over here and then we'll squeeze them in. Ooh, that's too much grease. That's way too much. Way, 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 way too much. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna take him and we're gonna pop him on. And our hub is Service, wipe off any remaining grease that comes out. Make sure you do not touch your rotor. And we are good. Ta -da. So there you have it. We have a fully serviced torch and a fully serviced Hydra i9 hub. So my thoughts and uh, which one do I prefer? Well, I prefer neither. I'm a DT Swiss guy. I love DT Swiss. They've never failed me. They last forever. And servicing those ratchets, it literally takes me minutes. I mean, literally snap of a finger. Pop it out, just like you would the Hydra. Take a towel, clean them, put grease on them, put them back in, you're done. I don't have to sit there and fiddle with pawls and springs and all that stuff, right? So, um... I've actually haven't had all that great luck with i9s personally. Out of three hub sets that I've bought, two of them came from the factory with 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 uh, uh, with manufacturing issues, admittedly from i9, and they took them back and they replaced them no problem at all. Right? This is my last one, and again, the original one to this one came uh, with factory default. So point B, I know they're okay hubs. I mean, they're good hubs. Um, I just don't think they're anywhere near where DT Swiss is in my opinion, right? So don't buy an i9 torch. It's, it's, it's old technology, it's old idea, it's done with, right? The Hydra is a way better system when it comes to everything, basically. It's just an updated torch and a badly needed update, right? Or a desperately needed update. So at the end of it all, uh, if you like i9, definitely stick with the torch. Uh, it's just going to be a lot easier to maintain, a lot quicker to maintain over time, right? So if you like the video, please press like. If you dislike the video, dislike twice. Um, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Uh, hit the bell to be uh, notified when new videos come out, all right? So I got more videos coming out. I just thought I'd throw this one together since I had to work on this one anyway and show the difference. And well, now people know how to service either their i9 torch or their i9 Hydra hubs, okay? Hope all is well with everybody and looking forward to talking to you all or seeing you all in the next video. All right, take care, bye.